Hi guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from MyTestedASP.net. In this video we are going to talk about a fairly new feature in the C-Sharp language and that's knowable reference types. It's available since C-Sharp 8 and it's, it's essentially a breaking change. So if you want to include it in your projects, make sure you're prepared to fix tons of warnings and in order to do that you need to manually turn on the feature because by default it's disabled. So let's see how to do that. You should open the uh, your project file. You should specify the language version to be at least 8.0 or the latest. You should enable the knowable reference types like this and since the compiler by default shows warnings, I've turned on treat warnings as errors in order to be more visual what's going on in our code. So if you're familiar with the C sharp language, you should know that you can write string text equal no string text equals no and that should be fine in the normal C sharp syntax or at least the old normal C sharp syntax because the knowable reference types should become the new normal in a year or two. So as we can see we're receiving an error that we're trying to convert a possible no value to non nullable type. By default, all types that uh, do not specify anything or the types how we how we write the types by default in C sharp, they will not allow no values. So when I write string text equals no, that's an error and I cannot use it. In order to allow no's, I will need to explicitly add an, a, an question mark after the reference type. The same way I can specify that an integer is no. So I will need to allow my type to receive no values and if I uh, want to remove no values and if I want to receive errors I will need to remove the question mark. That's the most basic example and the thing is that this is a compile time feature so you will not receive uh, anything more than compile time errors. So if you use a library which does not use this feature, this library can still throw no reference errors. So essentially what you may gain from this feature is you may save yourself from some bugs related to no reference exceptions and the compiler will remind you that you're using knowable code and you need to check it explicitly. That's the whole idea here. So essentially Microsoft are trying to fix the one billion dollar mistake which is the no reference exception. Okay, what else is possible here if we if we create some sort of method public static like this you won't be able to pass no values to this method because it does not allow no values you won't be able to You won't be able to pass it if it has the potential to be no, like this. Okay, but if I write it like that, I will receive 
possible no reference argument for parameter test. So essentially that's not possible. Cool. Uh, there's also another way to receive an error from the compiler and that's when we are trying to access a no object property. For example, if I try to access test.lent here, I will receive an error because I'm trying to dereference of a possibly no reference. So as, uh, in other words, I'm trying to access a value which may throw a no reference exception because this land here may throw a no reference exception. So the fix should be fairly easy. I should use the no coalescing operator and I should say that the return type here is also knowable. If I want to have nos in my code, all these values should allow no. That's the new rule of the C-sharp language. Cool, so we saw how we may receive errors if I'm trying to add a no value to a non uh, to non nullable reference type. And if I try to access a property on knowable reference type. These both uh, ways to write code will throw an error. Also, if I'm trying to use and I'm trying to create a new class, for example, this cat class, if I have some properties. You may know that by default, if you initialize a new object of a certain class, it will provide the default values of all the properties. And since the default value of the string is no, I'm not able to create this cat object here because this string name property will be no and that's not allowed. But if I provide a default value, it will be fine. That's one way to solve the issue. And another way is just to add a constructor which requires the name and sets it. This way we won't receive any compile time errors because the string name here is required and if I try to create a cat I am forced to pass a non-knowable value because knowable value will show an error and I will be able to pass the name and this way this string here is always not no. The C sharp compiler is helping me with the new non-knowable reference types. Okay, sometimes the compiler is not sure and you may need to help him. What do I mean by that is if I have a bow return not no if true and if I say return not no otherwise return no and if I specify here that the return type may be no what will happen if I want to say something like this var result equals test true I am completely sure because I know the logic here that this method will never return no because this method returns a not no string anytime 
the bull is uh, true like here but if I try to save that to a non knowable variable I will receive an error because the compiler is not smart enough to recognize that there is no way that this result will be no so I can help him I can help him by providing this exclamation mark at the end of the expression so specifying this exclamation mark here I am essentially saying the compiler look dude I know that this method returns no but I'm sure that it's safe so don't worry allow me to use this variable here because I'm completely sure it won't be no and that's the case so I can help the compiler here I can also do it like this I can also provide provide it like this I can even provide it like this I can say look man I know the variable is not knowable but I want to force it okay I know what I'm doing so essentially you can do it as I said already this feature is compile time checking so it doesn't matter during the runtime your um, your code may still throw an exception so the compiler allows you to force and disable the nose other way you may disable the no checking is by knowable disable and knowable restore this way you're telling the compiler I don't care about non knowable reference types in this part of the code and the compiler will not show any errors here of course you can enable it too okay so I need to provide the exclamation marks to make the code buildable again other ways to help the compiler is with attributes public static void test string test you may help the compiler with allow no or disallow no uh, with these attributes you are essentially telling the compiler okay this string here may not be a non-knowable uh, may be a non-knowable reference type but I want to allow no's so this is why I've marked it with this attribute and you have quite a few options for example you may specify the following you may say that you may specify the following if the parameter here is not no this method does not return no and the compiler will recognize the attribute and will use it to uh, help itself about whether to show an error or not so if I'm trying to say string test equals call the test and call it with no I will receive an error because I'm trying to convert a no literal to a non nullable type but if I try to pass the normal value the compiler will be completely fine because the compiler sees this attribute sees that if this is no if this is not no I'm not returning no here so the compiler will not show me an error 
Before I continue, I would like to thank my sponsors. You may already know that I create open source projects in my free time. These projects are developed mostly for free and they take quite a lot of time. So I would like to thank my sponsors which are allowing me to continue my projects and are supporting my channel that's Bellatrix, Resharper, Softunis, Smart IT, Noble Hire and OneBit Software. Thank you guys, you're truly great and I appreciate everything you have done for me. You're really cool. If you think that this channel is great or if you think that my open source projects are great, I, uh, you are more than welcome to become a backer or sponsor on Patreon or Open Collective. Some people already support me, and that's, and I'm super thankful to them. Thank you, guys. You truly rock. Okay, let's continue, and let me show you uh, one more thing. And that's about generics. If we have a generic method or class with some generic parameter, there's a new generic constraint with which you may specify that the T key generic parameter here is not allowed to be knowable. So I won't be able to call I won't be able to call the method if the parameter here is unknowable. For example, like this. I won't be able to use the generic method without specifying a not knowable parameter. Okay, so guys, I hope I hope you like this feature. I haven't tested it in a huge project, so I guess if I try to use it in one of my projects, for example, this one, which already has quite a lot of quite a lot of lines of code, it will be a huge task to convert the whole library to uh, don't allow knowable reference types. I may try it in the near future, but I expect it to be a bit difficult and to have some challenges. But fortunately, as we already saw, there are quite a lot of attributes that are here to help and I believe this feature is for the better future because it will remove some of the most stupid mistakes programmers make and that's about the no reference exception. If you are uh, if you are curious about this feature, there's a cool blog post in this blog about knowable reference types, which kind of explains all the attributes, all the situations with the knowable reference types, and so on. So, I'm going to leave a link to this blog post in the description of the video. So make sure to check it out if you decide to use this new C# -sharp feature. And that's it for now. Again, if you want to support this channel or if you want to support my projects, you're more than welcome to do so in Patreon or Open Collective and I even accept one-time donations via PayPal or buy me a coffee. Thank you guys for being with me and see you in the next video.